Hello, base. Flow meter reading. 0.5 a minute. They're doing very nicely, Scotty. Hello, Bob. Are you ready to test the diffuser? It's all set, Scotty. Increasing the throttle now. Engine rev 6,000 to 7,000. Stand by for routine test number four. Take it easy, Bob. This is where the others ran into trouble. Don't worry. Another drill. RPM, eight to nine thousand. Be sure to get the flow meter reading from him, Mr. Scott. Oh, don't worry, I will. What's the expected figure, point one? If we drop to that, the range of that aircraft will be more than doubled. Hello, control. Cutting in diffuser now. Jump! It's no good, his radio's gone too. aviation has spent so much money has once more proved a tragic failure. I read a more sensational Stop this murder. Why not, Doctor? The pilot who died yesterday was the fourth to lose his life testing this adaption. But those men had to die. That was the only way I could do it. I'm not blaming you. As long as the diffuser fails to work, that is all I care about. And that is all you are paid for. I'm going out, Lee. Phone the lab, will you, and tell him I've gone to see Scott at the plant. Yes, but what can you do? Surely it's too late for anyone to help now. Well, i got a feeling he's going to be short of friends right now, Dee. Anyhow, I've known this project since its early stages. There's nothing wrong with it. Yes, but all these accidents. That's exactly what I don't understand. See you later. Hey, Peter, put your bandages on. Do I have to? Well, you can't go around looking like the headless man. You'll give someone the fright of their life. <laughs> oh, all right. Sorry, Jenny. What more can I say? Bob was one of my best friends. But he was my husband. Can't you understand that? Jenny, please. All you care about is your work, this mad scheme. I worked all my life, Jenny, to make flight safe. You made it safe for Bob, didn't you? And for Jack and the others before that. You ought to be stopped from going on with this. I did all I could, Jenny. Bob knew the risks. Come along, Jenny. Better come with me. You 
kill Bob. Hello, Brady. Hello, Scotty. Come on in. Bad time. That's why I'm here. Well, don't give me any sympathy. It's the one thing I can't take. I'm here to help. I don't see that you can do anything. I reckon the whole project is dead. That doesn't sound like you. You don't know what I've been through since yesterday. That phone's never stopped ringing. Official calls, anonymous calls. I'm a killer, a murderer. Have you seen the newspapers? You should see some of the letters I've had. They're probably written by half-wits. Not all of them. Listen to this. It is criminal to proceed with a project which has proved itself unsound. But, Scotty, I sat in at the beginning of this project of yours. There was nothing wrong with it. Tell it to the Ministry. They've just been on the phone. All further government grants are withdrawn. No, Brady, I can go on as long as most men. But I think I've had enough of this. I know you're better, Scotty. You'll be fighting again in a couple of days. Do one thing for me, will you? Show me around the plant. What for? I'd like to check what goes on. Well, what could go on? How long have you had this present team? For years. Why? Do you trust them? I know what you're thinking. I used to think it might be sabotage myself. But that's not possible. Everything's been checked. And double-checked. Show me around. Let me draw my own conclusions, huh? All right, come on. I'll hand you over to my chief officer in charge of inspection and testing. Doctor, have you got time to show Mr. Brady around? Be pleased to. Mr. Brady, Dr. Court. The invisible man, isn't it? That's right. I'm glad you came, Mr. Brady. Scott has got to face the facts. And perhaps he'll take them better from an old friend like you. I'll do anything I can, Doctor. Then he must realize that his work's a complete failure. You're sure of that? I'm afraid so. We all believed in it as much as he did until we had those tests. Hmm. Always with the same result. Someone gets killed. Have you ever thought of sabotage, Dr. Court? I used to think of it all the time. We collect every particle we can from the wreck, go through it in the laboratory. Never once we found the slightest evidence of sabotage. Mm. No, Mr. Brady. This was just an idea that Mr. Scott had that looked good on paper. The only thing is, it doesn't work. Okay, I'll tell him. Meantime, I'll take a look around. you not to come here, Doctor. What would happen if you were seen? But this is terribly urgent. You've heard of Peter Brady. The invisible man, of course. He's been down to Scott's plant, came in talking about sabotage, had a look round. Scott handed him over to me. That was lucky. I tried to put him off the scent. I told him the project was a washout. Was he impressed? You can't tell with that character. He's got his face in bandages. And where is he now? He went home. But I hear he's coming back again tomorrow. I don't like it, Katrina. It's bad enough doing this job at the best of time, but it's impossible when there's an invisible man looking over your shoulder. Relax, Doctor. Leave Mr. Brady to me. Or rather, leave him to friend Stefan. He has a steadier hand than either of us. Well, the sooner we get this over, the better. Come along, Stefan. We are going for a drive in the country. <laughs>
Whoops. Sally, why don't you look where you're going? How can I look where I'm going if you're not there to see? Why don't you wear your visible clothes? Because I'm more comfortable in these invisible ones. I hate those bandages. I'll take you to school in a moment, sir. Uh, take her now, dear. I'll finish this myself. I'd hope you say that. Thank you, Peter. Come on, Sal. See you later, Uncle Peter. Have a good time. there by the window. Now you tell me, where do I shoot? At the machine, or to the left, or to the right, and then how far to the left, or to the right, one foot, two feet. But you must take a chance. No. I must kill him with the first shot. Hold it, Stefan. I saw a telephone by the front room window. If I make him pick it up, then you will know exactly where he is. I will go to the telephone box and call him. You go back to the car. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Brady. I don't think you know me. Hey! Drop that gun, you maniac! I will drive. of him. Feel on the bed. He isn't here. Look, Stefan. It's congealing. It feels like blood. It's, it's getting darker. You must have hit him. He's in the river. Look. The sooner we get out of this district, the better. murdered. How can you be so certain? It's sabotage, all right. Take it from me, Scott, and I'm going to prove it. What evidence have you got? Well, it grazed my arm. It would have killed me if I'd been in the driver's seat. 
but I steered the car from the side. Uh, do something for me, Scully. Get in touch with my sister, Dean. Tell her not to worry, no matter what she hears about me. All right, I'll do that. And don't tell anyone else I'm alive. Right. Is this true? The invisible man missing, believed killed? He is missing, all right. You shot him? Shot or drowned? Who cares? You can get back to the airfield, Doctor. You will have no further trouble from Mr. Braid. the papers you're supposed to be dead that's right and i wanted to stay that way what's the game brady bluff for high stakes i want you to make an announcement call the press give them this story that you're making a final test tomorrow okay brady i'll do it on one condition that i don't risk another pilot's life I'll fly it myself. Nice work, Scotty. That's what I hoped you'd say. Get that news out now. You mustn't do it. Look what happened before. This is suicide. Now listen, everybody. You used to believe in this project. Well, I still do. And I'm going to stake my life on it. All I want is a little help. Have you got a diffuser ready, Richards? Yes, sir. There's one on final test now. Good. Well, I want it fitted to an aircraft by tomorrow morning. I'm taking it up. message from the doctor. He will make his final arrangements as usual, just before the plane is due to take off. You and I will be there to watch it, well out of sight. to me. Oh, yes. Any comment? No, sir. Okay. Sign the final check sheet. Mr. Scott can take off now. Couldn't be better. Good. Good luck. Thank you. them in. Hello, base. Hello, base. Scott speaking. Number one engine okay. Hello, Scotty. Understand? Number one okay. Number two engine okay. Number two okay. Scotty, it's me, Brady. Listen, get caught back on board. Pretend you want to check the gauge or something. Whatever you say. 
Hello, base. Please ask Dr. Court to come back on board for a couple of minutes, will you? Right. I don't like this way. It won't be long. Oh, I'm sorry to trouble you, Doc. Would you mind checking that throttle? It feels as though it might be bound. It seems okay to me. Oh, well, just be careful. Thanks. Well done. Wait a minute. Door shut. Well, never mind, Doctor. It'll be a big help to have you with me. No, you can't. Snap yourself in. Hello, base. Permission to take off. Okay, Scotty. Best of luck. Doctor. Are you Dr. James Court? And I must ask you to come with us. Well done, Scotty. You made it. Thanks to Brady. Cut it out, Scotty. Congratulations. Thank you. 